Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Uh, today we are revisiting Castlevania 3 yet again, I think for the third time this month. Uh, this time, once again, for the Famicom. Uh, now, I actually had a, a different Let's Play lined up for today, but uh, I just had a really busy weekend, and one of those Let's Plays... Uh, Actually, technically, I have multiple Let's Plays lined up, but one of them was Doom for the Game Boy Advance. I wanted to do that towards the end of October 2016, um, but I realized that video is going to take me like three hours to do in one sitting, and I just, I'm not really up to the task right now. So, I'm going to push that off to another day, and we're going to run through Castlevania 3 once again for the Famicom. Uh, I did it as the first Let's Play this month uh, for October 2016, but in that video, we took the Sypho route. Uh, we kind of took the safe way. Uh, so what I'm going to do this time, since you guys can't seem to get enough of Castlevania, uh, we'll go ahead and play through it again. Uh, again, once again, the Japanese version. Uh, so you've got uh, the, the enhanced sound and, and subtle differences I'll explain as we get into the game. Uh, but I will take the Grant route this time, and I'll try to play some levels that we didn't play through uh, in either of my other Castlevania 3 Let's Play videos. So I'm going to go ahead and just skip the intro. Uh, don't really need to mess around with that. Uh, for anybody interested, I do have a dual play uh, of Castlevania 3 uh, US and Japanese long play side by side, which I uploaded earlier this month as well, a couple of weeks ago as of posting this video. So if you want to see the differences between the US version and the Japanese version, feel free to check out that video. It's got both games played side by side, and I try to sync them up pretty well throughout the video so you guys can see uh, notable differences. Like, one difference is in that... Uh, intro section where you see the cross there's like beams of light coming out of the cross in the Japanese version which I'm not really sure why they chopped that out in the North American release um, yeah it's kind of weird because I mean the cross is still there in the North American one it just doesn't have the beams of light so I don't know <laughs> some some interesting subtle changes in this game some I can understand like um, in the uh, the dance hall level um, it's um, there's like some statuettes, just like in Super Castlevania 4. In the Japanese one, they look kind of nude. And so, in the North American one, they cover them up. And like, okay, I get that. Um, even though it's actually kind of hard to tell they're nude in the Japanese version. We'll, we'll take a look at them once we get to that, that level in this game. That's actually one of the first stages in Dracula's Castle uh, that you always have to play through when you play through this game. But uh, yeah, some subtle differences between the, the U.S. and Japanese versions of the game. And again, like I said, if you want to see some of those differences in action, just feel free to check out my my dual play, or side-by-side -side long play, whatever you want to call it, that I uploaded earlier this month. So I'm going to also try to sort of progress through this game as quickly as I can. I'm not going to uh, play quite as safe as I did last time when I played this game. And uh, I don't think we're going to have a problem regardless. I'm, I'm pretty solid at Castlevania 3 now. Uh, this is a game that I used to have a lot of trouble with in terms of the Castlevania series, but I've been playing it a lot over these last couple of months, and I've, I've gotten actually pretty good at it, uh, surprisingly. And I've, now I've always been relatively comfortable with the game, but I've always had some sort of trouble going through it. Either I, I, would, I would die at very specific parts, or... You know, if I did die and I lost my good power-ups, I'd have a really hard time recovering, that sort of thing. Dracula's last stage, the final stage of the game, used to give me total hell. Now I don't really have to worry about it too much. I can get through it pretty consistently now, which is actually kind of nice, admittedly. So, this playthrough should go relatively smoothly. It'll probably take us about an hour to get through, and that's just the typical length for Castlevania 3, uh, including the Japanese version of the game. But I don't think we're going to run into too many issues, especially once we get Grant. Of course, if I do dumb things like that, we might start having issues. But yeah, these zombies, you can actually just jump over them. You know, a lot of players will just go and and attack them normally, but you actually don't have to. And this guy actually has some crazy reach, and I don't know if that's just a Japanese version thing. Um, or if he's just easier to hit in the North American version. Actually, he is a little bit easier to hit. Uh, one difference I don't know if I talked about before is that in the North American version, you can duck on this platform and hit this uh, this boss, but in the Japanese version, you can't. It doesn't register a hit. So that's actually a good positive change they made for the North American release. 
A lot of people see the Japanese version as like the de facto standard for Castlevania 3, but I don't necessarily agree with that now, now that I've played a lot of both versions. And um, th there's no question that the soundtrack is improved in the Japanese version by a considerable margin. It sounds quite beefy and very awesome. That is not to downplay the North American soundtrack either. It's also a really solid soundtrack. Um, but there are some subtle changes in the gameplay as well between both versions. Uh, for instance, that boss, you can duck and hit the boss, uh, which makes that fight uh, a good bit easier, actually. Um, there's also some other bosses where in the North American version, they, uh... They add some, like, flooring that's not in the Japanese one, so certain bosses are actually tougher in the North American version. Um, and I like that. I actually like the, the greater challenge uh, in certain boss fights. In the first level boss fight, I want to be able to hit that guy from ducking on that right side platform. Um, I'll sort of talk about some of the other differences as we get to them. Like, we're going to fight the Cyclops multiple times, most likely. Uh, we're going to fight this uh, sort of, like, demon winged demon sort of dude um and he's actually got more projectiles in the north american version whereas in the japanese version he's his projectiles are small and he only fires out two whereas in the north american one he fires out three um some really interesting differences again that you can actually see in my side by side long play and some differences i didn't really uh you know take note of until i did that video and i actually was looking at them side by side uh some details are so subtle that you don't really uh, think about them that much. So the Collect Tower is kind of a cool level. It's It actually pads out the game a little bit because if, you can either take this level or you can go the bottom route when you got the option after the first stage. And the bottom route will take you to the, the forest area. Now the forest area, if you go to it straight in... in um, if you go to it straight without going to the clock tower, you do get an extra section on that forest level. But that section's not very long. It's not even a fraction of the length of this entire clock tower stage. Um, so if you kind of want to extend like your game time when you play this game, go to the clock tower level. It takes a while to get through compared to um, going to the forest level first. We still have to go to the forest level afterwards. That's the funny thing about it. We just skip that first section that takes like a minute to get through. It's nothing crazy. Ooh, that was close. I thought we were going to actually fall down into that hole. There are some jumps that are a little kind of wonky in this game. A little tight, a little weird. And uh, even when you're really familiar with the game, you can still find yourself uh, falling into them by accident. Getting caught up on a ceiling of some kind or... Or the gears on this level. And uh, so yeah, this this clock tower level adds quite a bit of padding. Uh, and once you beat the boss of this level, you've got to go back through the clock tower again. Uh, albeit backwards. You have to go back down through the level, which is actually a really neat concept for this time period. You didn't really... Oh, Jesus Christ, I did it again, man. I grabbed the, the dagger, and I didn't want to do that. Uh, oh well, not a big deal. I like sticking with the holy water if I can, because it just... Just like in the first Castlevania, it does so much damage to these bosses. But it's not a really big deal. Not a, not a lot of the bosses in this game are actually really, really challenging. And neither is this second boss. He's not very difficult. So this is actually Grant. He's in sort of like a, a demon transformed form. And the story goes, at least in the North American version, that uh, he was transformed into this, you know, whatever he is right now. And by defeating him, he turns back to normal, and this is where you can you can take him as a partner. Now, one of the biggest changes between the North American and Japanese versions of this game, and kind of one of the reasons I wanted to do this Let's Play, is that Grant plays uh, significantly differently in this game. And you'll see exactly what I mean. We're going to switch right to Grant... And we're probably not going to play with Trevor for the rest of the game until we absolutely have to. So now we have to go back down. And this is a really neat concept because, like, I, I can't think of uh, too many other games from the time period that you'd go through a level in, like, a linear action game like this. 
and then you'd have to go through it again, but the opposite way. I thought that was just really cool about this game. So, you know, if you're familiar with the game, you already know that Grant can walk on walls and ceilings. And the concept, or sorry, the uh, execution of it is a little awkward. You can easily fall off. You have to basically hold in the same direction that the wall is. So I'm on the wall that's to the right. I'm basically holding A and right. And as you go up, you have to press the other direction. So to go from the right wall to the top wall, I have to hold right and then keep holding and move to up while still holding A. And I have to make sure I'm constantly holding up. If I just hold left or right, I fall like that. Uh, so it's, it's actually quite tricky to get the, uh, the climbing right with, with Grant. When you want to move left or right and you're on a ceiling, you have to hold diagonally left and right. If you um, just hold left or right, you fall down. So really tricky. But here's the biggest difference. Grant has unlimited projectiles in the Japanese version of the game. And uh, he only has, I believe, two actual sub-weapons he can use. It's the axe and the stopwatch. Uh, Grant does not have uh, holy water, as far as I can tell. And uh, so he's basically completely projectile-based now. And it's actually really cool. Ooh, nice. That was a, that was a good fall. Uh, when you're going back down through this level, if you know exactly where to go, you can, uh, you know, skip a lot of the uh, the stage pretty quickly. I, I think the level was designed with Grant in mind. It's like, okay, walk on these ceilings, get this extra life up here. And just fall. So like right here, I can jump up here and just fall down. And then fall down again. Get on the ceiling, just walk over here like this. It's it's really cool. Uh, playing with Grant in Castlevania 3 is a lot of fun. And uh, I, I, I do recommend trying to play as Grant. If you've played a lot of Trevor and Sypha, which are characters that feel more traditional Castlevania-like, Grant uh, will mix things up quite a bit. Especially the Japanese version. You know, not just with the platforming, uh, but the, you know, having the, the projectile ability really changes how you approach the game. And he actually moves faster when he's crawling on the ceiling, which is kind of cool. Yeah, no holy water. That would have been holy water with Trevor. Apparently he's called Ralph in this version, but I'm, I'm still going to call him Trevor because... That's what I've always known him as. Um, I've been playing Castlevania 3 since the game was brand new uh, back on the NES. And so we've always known him as Trevor. And I'm just going to keep calling him Trevor because, yeah, I'm from North America. So <laughs> it's Trevor to me. But uh, a few of you guys did post a comment on my original Akamajo Densetsu video uh, calling him Ralph. And you guys are absolutely right, I believe. Yeah, I don't even think he has the cross. And I think I actually just... I can't remember if the cross was like the, the second or third candle. But I'm not sure. Actually, what I could be doing is just skipping these guys completely, but... Yeah, so like I said, playing with Grant is just a ton of fun. Uh, the projectile ability uh, actually makes life a lot easier. Like, look at that. I didn't even have to get close to that guy. I was just able to just throw a dagger from all the way across the screen. Now, you can get daggers with, with Trevor, but, you know, it's a little bit slower. With Grant, you can just get on the stairs like this, hold down the B button, and he just constantly throws them until your enemies are dead. And so if you want to play really safe in this game, you can literally do just that. Just stay back and just take your time. And uh, you can mow down enemies pretty quickly with him uh, from a safe, safe distance. You don't have to worry about heart usage. We didn't really need that, but I always like to get it. It's a nice little secret. Because your health doesn't actually get refilled between these sequences. Alright, so we took the top route last time when we played with Sypho, so we're going to take the bottom route this time, so I can show you guys some different levels. 
I kind of view this as the harder route too, because we're going to eventually get to uh, fight Alucard. And some of the levels that come after the Alucard fight are really challenging in this game. Some of the most challenging levels in the game. And you guys will see exactly why once we get there. Uh, especially without having Alucard. Alucard has the, the nice ability of being able to turn into a bat and fly. And you can pretty much avoid uh, some of the hardest sections in the game with Alucard because he can just fly over them. And so when a lot of people take this quote-unquote harder route, they make sure to pick up Alucard to make life a lot easier. Uh, I personally like going through the route now without Alucard. I don't like using Alucard as a crutch anymore. I like playing the game uh, normally. Mainly because I can get through it now. And it's... The extra challenge is more enjoyable to me. Um, for the, the type of challenge that it is. And you guys will see what I mean once we get to the part I'm talking about. Let's get that heart. Oh, didn't get the heart. Uh, so with Trevor, what you can do is actually bust this open. Like that. Let's get that one. And then you come here and there's some, some wall meats. Uh, but with Grant, obviously, you can just climb through. So there's going to be some other parts later on in this game that we can just skip with Grant as well. Grant does make some parts easier, no doubt. But not quite in a broken kind of way that you get with Alucard, where you can literally just fly on the top of the ceiling for the whole level. Like, with Grant, I can't do that right now, because I can't reach his ceiling, so I still have to fight these guys normally. Now, granted, with Alucard, to use his bat form, it does use up hearts pretty quickly, so it's not like you're going to be using the, the flight form all the time, but it is something that's there. Uh, something to keep in mind with Grant, I didn't really explain. If you're on walls, you can actually shoot your daggers still. Which is pretty cool. And even when you're on ceilings. Unfortunately, you can't shoot your daggers upwards. But that's what the axe is for. So, <laughs> with the combination of the dagger and the axe, <laughs> or stopwatch, Grant is uh, pretty much unstoppable, in a way. Wow! I wasn't expecting that to happen. Alright, what I actually want to do is switch over to Trevor so I can get his whip powered back up. Because whenever you die with Grant, uh, Trevor technically dies as well. And you've got to repower up again. Okay, that's good enough. Now, as you can tell, you actually have to be pretty accurate with Grant. That's one of the downsides. Uh, if you're not accurate, then uh, you can get punished like I did before. Oops. I thought I, that was a ceiling I could walk onto. See, look at that. Not accurate. So let's go ahead and just use that stopwatch. All right, so this is going to be a little bit a little tricky. I wasn't expecting to die. I wonder if the stopwatch works. I don't think it does. Nope. I figured they gave it to you because it did work, but apparently it doesn't work on this boss. Oh, I really wanted that axe. I don't think that axe... I think that axe was an enemy drop, or drop from an enemy, so let's... let's whoa! Forgot there was a second one. Actually, I think it was an item drop. That axe will make this boss fight so much easier. All right, so let's try one more time. All 
Okay, it is there. Okay. Alright, well this is going to be a little tricky getting through this section with just the axe without taking a hit. Oy, oy, oy. Well, I'm not playing as well as I thought I would, honestly. I was like, oh yeah, I got this. Grant, we'll just, we'll just plow through this. Just got to make sure I take this slow. Okay, I wasn't expecting another bat to appear. Oh, whew. that actually had me on edge. It was like, ah, oh, I don't normally get to this boss fight without having any health. So at this point in the game, pretty much every enemy will take away four blocks of health as far as I can tell, maybe, maybe five. And so you can only, even though you've got a full health bar, you can really only take like four hits, maybe five if you're lucky. Some free points from those guys. Now, one thing I figured out actually, I was doing um, some high score attempts on this game. And uh, so apparently, your first extra life is around the 20,000 point mark. And every 50,000 points after that is another extra life. So if you find a section like this and you've got the hearts, feel free to grind out some points. Uh, if you combo uh, enemies, you get points for the first enemy, uh, but then you also get combo points for the other two enemies. It's 400 points for the first one, uh, 700 for the second. And I actually did not know about that wall meet there. That's pretty cool. I had no idea. So what I'm going to do is try to get a couple more hearts just to... We're going to sort of grind out my score just a little bit. Why not? We're here. I, just, I sort of want to demonstrate that in action. Oh my god. Never mind. That always happens when I want to try to grind out some points in this game. I do something stupid, like pick up a stopwatch. But one of my tips to newcomers in Castlevania is to not just whip the candles and pick up whatever you see. Or not even what you see. Like, don't go into the candles and attack them like this. Like, it's good to attack them from a distance so you know what they actually drop. Because they might drop something you don't want. Like, I really don't want the stopwatch. I never really want the stopwatch in Castlevania. Uh, maybe just ve in very specific sections, I might find it beneficial, like on the, the last level of the first Castlevania. Like the very first section where you have to deal with those really large bats. Uh, sometimes having the stopwatch is good, because you can just freeze them in place and then just keep going and avoid them completely. But in this game... There's not really that many sections in the game I need the stopwatch for, so... I'd rather have, like, a double axe or something like that. Basically, the axe with the double power-up, where I can use it twice in a row. Uh, without waiting for one go off to go off-screen. So that sucks, but uh, I actually wanted to grind out some points. We probably gotta grind it out uh, a few thousand at least. That would've put us closer to our, our second extra life, which is at 70,000 points. Easy one up, that's nice. I had a feeling there was something there, but... Castlevania 3 does have quite a few uh, secret areas, which is nice. And here with Grant, it's actually a little bit hard to jump over this, but you can do it. And actually, one thing I probably could do, and this is one of the cool things about Grant, is just, eh, skip this section altogether. Now, you do have to uh, watch out for skipping sections in certain parts. There's actually one area in this game where you can walk on the ceiling with Grant, get, get you know, kind of clever and creative with things. That 
wasn't planned. I wasn't planning on doing that. That was definitely weird. Um, but there's a section in the game with Grant, and I'll, I'll actually point it out once we get to it, where uh, you get stuck. It like it triggers a boss fight, and um, you can't actually get off the ceiling. You're you're basically trapped at the start of the boss fight. Okay, well, that's not too bad. We got the axe. Not a big deal. I actually prefer to have more hearts in this section, though. I'm really surprised I got hit by that the first time. I, that's never, never even happened to me before, as far as I know. Alright, so here we got Alucard. It's uh, somewhat similar to the original Dracula boss fight in the first Castlevania. Uh, this fight's probably going to take a little while, because Grant can really only do, like, one hit at a time, if you're lucky. You can probably time it to where you can get two hits, but it's a little tricky. See, you've got to be really accurate. I just, I've missed those last couple of times. There we go. That's a two-hitter. That's, ooh, I got hit too. And of course, after you beat Alucard, you get the option to take, uh, take him with you. I don't really care about story too much, but the the story goes in this game. Uh, Alucard's basically just testing you, and he wants to uh, wants to tag along. But we're not going to be uh, playing with Alucard. We might do another Let's Play in the future. Maybe save that for another year, where we do actually take Alucard. And I can show you some of the tricks where you can go into his bat form and just skip certain sections. But uh, we're not doing that this month. I think uh, we've between <laughs> between the original Let's Play I did this month and uh, the, the dual play, the side by side long play. I think we've probably had enough Castlevania three specifically. All right, so we want to make sure we don't take him. So I'm just letting the text just sit on its own. Select the second option to ignore him. You see that? It's actually kind of cool. There's little details like uh, when you say yes, Trevor nods. And when you say no, he shakes his head back and forth. So cool little classic 8-bit details some people might not pick up on. I've always liked little details like that in games. If you want to get really fancy, you can just crawl over this section. I think that might actually be wall meat. Let me see if I can... Yeah, it's not going to appear now. Uh, if you get a section where you've got like a breakable wall, and it's got two blocks you can break away, if you break away one block and then move off screen and then move back, it comes back, and the game thinks that you've already broken through both blocks, so you can't do it again. So, a little, little glitch in the game. And something to be aware of when you're playing through this game. Alright, so this right here is actually going to be an extra life. And I find that I can really only get that with Grant. Uh, you can try to get it with Trevor. You can make those blocks fall and try to whip it. But I find it really difficult to do that. I don't even know if I've ever successfully done it. So I just, I grab it with Grant, and it's just a free one-up. Alright, so what I'm going to do is not go the bottom way. That takes us to, like, the, not Atlantis, but, like, I don't even know what you call it. It takes you to uh, one of the water-themed levels in the game. Ooh, that was really close. This is a level where you can just skip through a lot of stuff, too. Like, this part... Just walk on the ceiling, just skip it completely. And then we're, we're at the boss fight. So this is the section I was talking about where you can try to get... Um... On the ceiling. Oh, I wasn't planning on doing that. I'm dumb. 
But uh, the problem with doing that is that you get trapped and uh, you can't fight the boss. You can't get back down. So you basically have to time time the whole boss fight out, unfortunately. And that's a tricky jump with Grant as well. What I should do is actually switch back to Trevor just to get powered up again. Because Trevor is better for certain boss fights, but I'm just kind of doing everything with Grant just because I think it's it's fun. Oh, I did it again! I I was actually clung onto that wall and I jumped for some reason. Can you jump off? What? I didn't know that was possible. Can you jump when you're on a wall with Grant? I'm gonna test that out once- here, let's... Yeah, you- I, I had no idea you could do that. I didn't know- yeah, so what I was doing was I was clinging onto the walls, and then I was jumping from the wall. That's... You know, and it's funny, I probably did it earlier on in the video without even realizing it, just... Doing it subconsciously, not even thinking about it. Oh, it's just a heart. It's not wall meat. Okay. Yeah, so this playthrough is actually taking a little bit longer than I, I expected. I wasn't planning on really dying at all, to be honest with you. But it is interesting, like, discovering some of these things as I play. Like, again, I had no idea I could cling onto a wall and just, um... Well, I'm actually surprised it uh, put me at the checkpoint that it did. Because then I have to go through this section all over again. That's kind of interesting, actually. I'm pretty sure if I take the bottom route, if I die doesn't take me back to that checkpoint I got to. It just starts a brand new level, I'm pretty sure. Alright, so we might end up having to do this boss fight... ...multiple times. Because I pretty much have no health. I don't think there's wall meat on this fight at all. Nope. Oof. I wonder if his reach is uh, less in the, the North American version. We're going to switch over to Trevor, too, just to make this part easier. So, we've already fought this boss once, but one of the gimmicks with this one is that every time you hit him, bones fly out. And... So they can definitely get in your way and make life pretty difficult. Alright, so this is where the game gets pretty tricky for a lot of people. So, if you take this route, the first level in Dracula's, you know castle or whatever kind of starts here actually this part isn't that bad it's it's the level after this that I'm thinking of this level is actually I think easier than uh, the one you have to take on the cypher route I mean because with Grant you can just skip a lot of this stuff completely
So this part you have to duck. Can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes those platforms don't line up perfectly, so you might fall down. It's actually kind of a cool level. Back in the day when I played Castlevania 3 a lot, I didn't really ever play this route. I always went to uh, the water stage. Probably because of the music. Uh, it uses the Aquarius theme, which is, you know, a classic Castlevania tune now. Uh, there's also going to be some wall meat right here. Not that we needed it, but just, just the FYI for anybody uh, that might try out this game. Yeah, I would always take the water route because uh, it was it's a cool level, I mean, to begin with, but uh, two, the music was great. I like the music on this level, too. I like the music in this whole game. Like, I, I think every piece of music really just fits the game. I mean, some tunes are darker and less melodic than others. You know, they're not really tunes you're going to listen to outside the game in the sound test menu. Like this boss fight. I'm not going to listen to this boss fight outside, you know, the main game. But it does fit, I think. Now, Castlevania 3 really has a fantastic soundtrack. Especially the Japanese version, of course. I mean, with uh, the extra sound channels the Japanese version has, it just sounds so thick and beefy. But it's not to discount the North American soundtrack. I think it sound that sounds excellent as well. It sounds more in line with the Castlevania's 1 and 2 we got in North America, so I'm, I'm totally fine with it. Whereas the Japanese version just kind of sounds like its own thing. Alright, so this is the level a lot of people dislike, and I totally understand where they're coming from. This was my least favorite level back in the day. So if you take Sypho, you can actually just avoid this route completely. I mean, I guess technically you could avoid it completely with Grant as well. But on that one section where you can either go towards Sypho or go down towards the swampy area, if you take the swampy route, you're pretty much guaranteed to go to this level. Uh, even if we took... T even if we went the, the water level route in our last level choice, we still would have ended up at this level, so... But again, this is one of those routes where you can either have Grants or Alucard. I don't know if it's possible to get here with Sypha without looping the game. I don't remember. I'll have to think about that some other time when I'm not playing. <laughs> Alright, so we're at the 40 minute mark right now. I'm going to guess uh, we're probably going to end up a little over the hour mark since we did die a few times. So some of these parts will actually go a little bit quicker with Grant at least, like he can just jump up and attach to that wall. Whereas with Trevor, you'd have to wait. But I think that's the whole purpose of this level design. Uh, if you're going through solo with just Trevor, it's pretty challenging, No, no doubt about it. But if you're playing with Grants and Alucard, it's a little bit easier. And I think that's why they designed these sections the way they did. They're like, okay, well, you're probably going to have either Grants or Alucard by this point. So we'll design the level to where, you know, if you have those characters, it flows a little bit faster. So, we got our first extra life, you know, we hit the 20,000 point mark. And this is the part that everybody dislikes. And, uh, if you're not terribly familiar with this game, you'll probably understand why pretty quickly. And this is why a lot of people have Alucard in this part. And unfortunately, since we took some damage on that boss fight, we're going to have a, a little less room for error, unfortunately. 
I'm only going to be able to take about two hits. And you've got to be careful about getting a game over as well. Because if you get a game over... You've got to do this whole section over again. Actually, I think even if you die, you have to do the whole section over again. I guess we'll find out. Let's try not to die. You kind of want to be careful about how fast you push the screen up because the, the pattern of the blocks will change depending on how many blocks are still on the screen. So as you can see, like, I've gotten into a rhythm. It goes right, left, whoa. See, the pattern just changed up. Now I have to adjust my pattern. And that's what's tough about this section. And you want to just cross your fingers that the pattern pretty much stays the same for the most part. But it's not going to, it's going to switch up based on how many other blocks are on the screen. But one of the good things about playing with Grant is you don't have to go all the way up to the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for, yep, those blocks. And just skip it. So it doesn't take quite as long with Grant, but you still have to watch out. And play it safe, otherwise you'll probably end up dying. And I believe there's actually going to be an extra life over here. Yep, down here. So we're just going to wait. And again, just like with other parts of the grant, you just skip it. Now, if you're just playing as uh, Trevor, you would have to go through that uh, that platforming section. So it might actually be wiser for me to just play as Trevor here, but what I'm going to do is just not jump at all. I've got plenty of ammunition with my axe. I've got plenty of hearts. Yeah, that works out. On those platforms, you can't jump on them. If you do, they, they, they flip and rotate, and then uh, you fall through them. And one of the issues is that Grant jumps so high that uh, he'll, you'll most likely, you know, over jump and you'll hit the spikes and you'll die instantly. Okay, so this is an auto-scroller. And what we want to do is try to make sure we stay towards the left-hand side. Because we want to take the left stairwell if we can. Now we're still going to have to be relatively careful because we can only take two hits. Or really we can only absorb one hit. The second hit will kill us. So... Okay, good. Got the uh, times two. That'll actually be good for the boss. So this staircase is the one we want to go up. And the reason is that there's uh, the mummies on the other side. And as far as I know, there's no breakable walls here, no nothing. And so we're going to have to... This is the, uh, I guess, the threesome boss fight. Uh, we have to fight the mummies. And then we have to fight um, the cyclops. Okay, so we already took one hit. That's not good. But one of the good things with Grant, as you can see, is you can just sit here and just duck. And even if the mummy shoots a projectile upwards, um, your knife will still hit it. And one of the other good things is with the Cyclops, 
there's no floor beneath me, so the Cyclops actually can't walk to where I am. The North American version, there is flooring right below this platform I'm standing on. So the Cyclops can actually walk through the wall I'm on, and his head and club will hit me, and I'll die. Or get hit. In this case, die, because I have no health. So this boss fight's actually a good bit easier in the Japanese version. In the North American version, what happens is, uh... Uh, the mummy's projectiles. I wasn't expecting to get hit by that. What the hell, man? The mummy's projectiles actually wave up and down like they do in the classic Castlevania, the first one. Which makes them harder. Uh, the Cyclops has a platform he can walk on that will allow him to hit me in, in areas he wouldn't be able to hit me in the Japanese version. And then the third guy, the flying dude... Uh, has multiple projectiles in the North American version. Well, I should say three projectiles. I mean, he's got multiples in the Japanese version, but he shoots the projectiles really slow in the Japanese one, and they're really small, and there's only two of them in this version. So each of those bosses is technically a little more challenging in this game. I mean, pff, sorry. <laughs> Getting a little... Uh, confused, constantly talking about the U.S. and Japanese version, but in the in the North American versions, they're more difficult. Alright, so let's try this again. Actually, what I should try is... Uh, to come up here and see if they walk all the way over to the right. Oh, geez, so he can kind of go through that uh, wall a little bit. That's interesting. So that mummy went through that wall slightly, like about halfway through, and it hit me. So I think we might actually be better going over to this side. No, you got about the same amount of breathing room. So now what I probably need to do is try to run under this guy. Kind of like that. He's got a very similar pattern to Dracula's uh, final form in the first Castlevania. Where he's got higher jumps, he's got short jumps and high jumps. You can see those two little projectiles. Uh, in the North American version, there are three much, much larger projectiles. What's also interesting about the North American version is that they... ...polished up the art on this guy. They actually added a little bit of shading to him in the North American version, so... Uh, he has some brighter shades of orange on him, and he looks a little more detailed in that version, which is really cool. Like, I'm surprised they actually went through and touched up a few things in that version of the game. So it's not like it was just censorship, but they also added a couple extra little details here and there. So it's really interesting seeing those those subtle differences between the two versions. So here's actually the statues I was talking about in the very beginning of this Let's Play. You can see the, that statue is pretty much naked for the most part. But it's not quite as detailed as it is in Super Castlevania 4. Um... So, it, like, I didn't even really notice it was a naked statue the first time I played this game. I was just focusing on the games. I didn't even realize it was there until I did my, uh, side-by-side -side long play. 
Uh, what I probably want to do... I guess it doesn't really matter that much. I was going to say, we probably want to just switch over to Trevor, but... I, I really don't think it matters that much, to be honest. I think we're going to go ahead and just try to play the rest of the game with Grant. Uh, we will have to switch back over to Trevor for the final fight. Uh, because Grant, I don't think, will have an axe by that point. Actually, Dracula's uh, first couple of forms are really difficult without Trevor. Trevor just does more damage, because Trevor's going to have a uh, the cross. In the Japanese version of the game, he can get the cross in the final section right before Dracula. Whereas in the North American version, he gets... Uh, I think it's like a... It's a dagger right before Dracula. Uh, but since the checkpoint's different in the North American version, uh, he also has the option to get an axe, which is what I usually go with in the North American version. I'll play with Trevor and then use the axe. Yeah, we're at almost 50, 55 minutes, 53, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's probably going to probably take us an hour and a quarter. A little bit longer than I planned, but that's what happens when you die. And you don't play very well. Oops. I was trying to switch back over and, and throw my dagger to the left, but that wasn't fast enough. Castlevania is a stiff franchise. Uh, pretty much all of them are, are, are slightly stiff. Uh, especially these these original few on the NES. Uh, they are by far the, the stiffest Castlevanias out there. And so, like, turning and shooting really quickly, you've got to really figure out the timing. So it takes practice, it takes practice, and that's kind of what I like about the Castlevania franchise, is you do have to get used to how the engines work, how the movement and combat feels and operates, but once you get them down, they just, they feel so good, there's just a, a strange satisfaction I get from playing these old, rigid Castlevania games. Alright, so this is death, and this could be challenging with Grant. I guess we'll see. Okay, one hit's fine. It's this once we get to the second part, it's a little bit easier. gonna just try to run under him just like so yeah the second form is really not that hard as long as you've got the pattern figured out so I basically just let the head move over once and then on the second time it moves over I just I run under it just like I did I, I pretty much do that the exact same way every time I play All right, so we're on the second to last level, and what's tr gonna be tricky about this level is that we don't have Cypher, so it's a little bit harder to glitch this boss out. This is the doppelganger boss, and this is the boss I always have the most trouble with in this game. Um, but uh, a friend here on YouTube, uh, he goes by Diamond Lung Plays. He'll, I don't know if he'll post a comment on this video or not, but he's posted comments on some of these uh, October Let's Plays, and he was watching me on Twitch one day as I was playing this game, and he uh, gave me a trick on how to beat this doppelganger boss easily. Apparently you can glitch it out, and I'm actually beginning to, to think that the glitch actually isn't really a glitch. I almost think it's intentional, because the game makes a very specific sound effect when uh, you switch over, well, when you do the glitch, quote-unquote glitch. Um, so I'll show you guys what I mean once we get to the boss. Um, but yeah, he helps me out with that, too. Because this that, that was always my, my, my brick wall when I would play Castlevania 3. 
if I didn't use Cypher, I would get stuck at the doppelganger boss, and that, that was usually where I would give up. But, uh, thanks to him, I was able to uh, get through this without Cypher. Without having to have Cypher being my, uh, my crutch, basically. And one of the other great things about Grant is, thanks to him having unlimited projectiles, it makes these sections a whole lot easier. You can just take out these bone pillars from a distance. Like, if I really wanted to, I could just take each of them out one by one. And that's oftentimes the strategy I use when I get to these sections. I would just literally take my, my time like this. Just take it super slow. You know, the more I've played this level, the more I've gotten used to it, and, uh... I used to really hate this level. Like, I would always have such a hard time getting through it. Uh, to be fair, we are playing the Japanese version, and it is a little bit easier, because the Bone Pillars... Uh, they shoot slower in this version of the game. Whereas the North American version, their projectiles are considerably faster. Which makes it harder to just avoid them going up those stairs in that last vertical section. Um, the more I've played it, the more I've gotten used to it, and I can get through this level with pretty much... Without too many issues, it's just the doppelganger boss fight is what uh, has held me up up until just recently. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be an extra life up here, and I'll show you where that is once we get to it. gonna be right up here. With Grant, it's it's a lot easier. You can just jump your way up to it. You have more time to deal with this skeleton guy. Again, playing with Grant is just so much fun because you can do things like that. Uh, and that's what gives Castlevania 3 um, its charm is the fact that you can play in so many different ways. Not really necessarily its charm, but it kind of gives it its longevity, basically. It kind of makes it one of the best Castlevanias in the franchise. If you can get... If you can get ugh, geez, I can't talk. It's at that point in the Let's Play where I can't talk. Uh, I think <laughs> the same thing happened at this exact same part in my first Let's Play. And then I think I ended up getting hit by a bat and I died there. That's right, that's what happened. Um... Being able to play as the different characters and having their different play styles just gives the game longevity. Gives it replay value. Like, it's... <laughs> not quite 30 years since I first played this game, but it's getting really damn close. And... I'm still figuring new things out about it. That's, that's really one of the great things about this game. Uh, even compared to other Castlevania games. I mean, I still play the hell out of every other Castlevania game basically, but Castlevania 3 is one of the few in the franchise where I'm still learning, like, a lot of new things about it. Through experimenting with the other characters I wouldn't normally experiment with. Alright, so what we need to do is let him get down here, hit him. Oh, or not hit him. And then, basically what you do is you hit the doppelganger, Switch and then hit him again, then switch and then hit him again. You have to wait for him to transform Just like this You'll notice it makes like a special sound every time it transforms Which almost makes me think like I'm supposed to be doing this Which if that's the case really clever on the developers because I never once thought to try this as a kid 
and I was always just so frustrated that this boss fight was here because these guys, this doppelganger is brutal, by the way. And I'm not going to demonstrate it because I don't want to do that whole section over again. We're already uh, not really tight on time, but this has gone a little bit longer than I I planned on. So this is time consuming, but it's it's a way to beat this guy. And if you're having trouble with this game, I highly recommend doing this trick. Or you can just play a Cypher and get up on the left corner and just uh, use that trick as well. So if you have the uh, the homing balls with Cypher, which is pretty much gu you're guaranteed to have, because uh, that last section leading up to this has the uh, the homing brawl ball projectile for Cypher. You can just sit up in the top left corner with Cypher and just use that homing ability and the doppelganger won't know what to do. It'll be on the bottom floor, it won't be able to hit you. And that's it. Got some nice glitchy graphics. And this is the final stage. So we're gonna go ahead and just play this with with Trevor as well. I mean, not Trevor, uh, Grant. But what we will do is switch back over to Trevor on the final boss fight itself. Let's go ahead and just get these hearts. The more the better on this stage. See, with the Grant, you can actually walk on the left-hand side. With other characters, you can't. So you have to go through the right-hand side, uh, squeeze your way through those gears, and then fall down to the right-hand side. And just fall down like that, and get hit by a bat. That's always good. I think we can duck these with Grant. Yeah. So with Grant, you can just take your time. Like so. I think this candle is an extra life. Ooh, it's not. I think in the North American version, it's actually an extra life. See, one thing we can do here is, and this is kind of fun, is just skip this guy completely. Uh, with Trevor, I don't think you can do that. I think you can try to jump over the bone pillar, but I haven't been, uh, been able to make that work. And, uh, something I didn't really point out... Well, I know, actually, I did point it out. I didn't... I just... Because my side-by-side -side long play had no commentary, which is just the style of that video. I did have some people comment on that, being like, Oh, where's the commentary? Um... I don't do commentaries on those styles of videos for anybody that checked that out that's also watching this. Uh, in the North American version, and I actually demonstrated this in that video, if you die on Dracula, you get checkpointed right here in the North American version. In the Japanese version, uh, you get checkpointed um, right at Dracula's room, basically. Uh, which makes things a little bit easier in that version of the game. I think even if you get a game over... Actually, no, I think if you get a game over... Even in this version, you still go back to the beginning. I think? Ah, frick. I don't remember, man. Um, but the North American version's checkpoint is much more rough. This section right here is harder than the North American version because there's bats. There aren't any bats in the Japanese version. Uh, there probably are bats in the second loop, but... Second loop, you kind of expect it to be a little more difficult. But in the Japanese version, if you die, you're checkpointed right here, basically. Let's go ahead and just, uh... Grind out some hearts. See if we can do this on our first try. Actually, you know what? I might not even need to use Trevor. I might just use, uh, Grant. Because I've got Axe, I've got the Axe, which I need for the second form. Not second form. Third form! 
and I've got the uh, the times two power up. It would be nice if I had the times three power up. That would make it a little bit nicer. So the the multiplier power ups they allow you to have multiple projectiles on screen at once. So I've got the two power up, which means I can throw two axes on screen at once. And of course, Grant's got his throwing dagger as well by default. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all, actually. I was expecting it to be a little bit harder with Grant. And this boss is probably going to be really easy, because Grant, just his jumping ability is so much better than any other character in the game. I can just easily jump over these projectiles and just sit in the far right corner. Basically not even have to worry about anything. I usually die at this boss just because of carelessness. But it is definitely harder. Uh, in the North American version, if you've got just Trevor. Because his jumping ability is not nearly as good, and the beam that Dracula's third form fires in the North American version is much longer. It's like three times as long, so it's harder to jump over as well. Oh, man! So there you have it, guys. Uh, Japanese Castlevania 3, Grant Routes. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually just cut off this video because I think on the, my, my last one I actually ended up getting a copyright claim due to this uh, <laughs> ending theme and I just don't want to have to deal with the, the whole claim process. I always get copyright claims on Castlevania 3 videos and it's kind of a pain so I'm gonna, going to avoid that. Uh, but I've got two other full Let's Plays of this game on my channel already. Uh, one from 2013, I believe, and then one from um, earlier this month, 2016. And then I've got my side-by-side -side long play. Actually, I even have a full playthrough on Twitch. That's four playthroughs on this channel. <laughs> but feel free to check those out if you're interested. Uh, that's Akamejo Densetsu, a.k.a. Castlevania 3 for the Famicom. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. Uh... Feel free to check through my other October 2016 Let's Plays. I've got a lot of horror-themed Let's Plays on here. And uh, as of uploading this, we're nearing the very end of October. We've only got a few days left, uh, but you can still expect a couple of other videos uh, until Halloween, with the grand finale being on Halloween. Not really a grand finale, but my final uh, October Let's Play will be on Halloween, so stay tuned for that. But uh, all right, guys, take care. Uh, I'll see you soon.